Oh man. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. Uh, today is about experimentation. Welcome back to Black Magic Craft, guys. One thing on my to-do list that I've been wanting to play with for quite some time is oil paints. Recently, I've you know really started to enjoy airbrushing with inks, and it's really unlocked a lot of creativity in me and made me really enjoy the process in a totally new way. And oil paints and oil washes specifically have been really appealing to me. And I think they may be the next progression, the next tool to add to my arsenal. So I decided to finally go out and stock up on oil paints to give this a go. Now I didn't mess around. <laughs> I, uh, I went for good paints. Uh, I've been told that, you know, there is some difference and quality paints make a difference. So I bought some Winsor Newton paints and I bought some really big ones. People experienced in oil washes are going, why on earth did you buy those giant tubes instead of just buying these little ones? I was at the store and these little tubes were $10 and these were, I think, 20. There's far more than double the amount of paint in them. So my little monkey brain said, this is more cost effective, even if I never use it all in my life. So I bought these, but I am probably set up for life here. I bought all the basic kind of colors uh, for washes, black, burnt umber, raw umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and some green, terra verte. Uh, so this should be enough to do weathering. I have high hopes for this working really well on terrain, specifically when I finally get to building my, and painting my torment, not torment, when I finally get to painting my Plague City stuff, I wanna use oil paints. I just wanna see how they work, how they feel first. I've watched a couple of videos, uh, not too closely, because I like to learn through doing, through experimentation, and that's what this is all about. If you are up looking for a tutorial on oil painting, this is not it. This is a learn with me and see me mess up along the way. I needed something to test it out on, and I figured I'd test it out on a miniature. Today's sponsor is Crippled God Foundry, and one of the minis they have this month is this really nice Ent mini, and I figured the textures on it would really work well for oil washes and the colors that I had on hand. So I'm gonna see if I can paint this guy up almost entirely with these oil paints. I 3D printed him out, uh, it turned out really great. It all fit on one build plate, multi-part piece. I put it together. I primed it with black rattle can primer, highlighted it with with uh, just acrylic ink and then put a clear coat on it because the paint thinner that you use to mix this oil paint, uh, I, I would assume that it's gonna remove that acrylic ink pretty easily. So it's all locked in with a clear coat that I let dry for over a full day. So I, I don't know where to start. Palette's probably a good idea. Pipette's probably a good idea. Some brushes, some cardboard to put the oil paints on. Gonna crack a window and turn on the exhaust fan so I get some fresh air in here with these paint thinners. Water is a big no-no here and everything needs to be thinned and cleaned with paint thinner. So I'm gonna pour a bit in here. I guess uh, we will mix up the first paint. Now, I don't know. I kind of think I need to go from light to dark here. I think I'm gonna paint it all out in kind of like a yellow ochre and then do a washes with the umbers to get in all those little cracks. And hopefully that looks good. I don't know. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. So yeah, a little bit of that. Um, let's just see how it thins. Probably should have watched more videos on this. Now I'm gonna thin this to like the consistency kind of of acrylic model paint. I don't know if that's correct, but seems like the thing to do, which I think needs a lot of paint thinner. And uh, let's just see what happens. I was expecting these to smell a lot worse, like really chemically or like maybe like acetone. And I know that although this is odorless, it still ain't safe to breathe. Uh, but the smell I'm getting off these paints really smells a lot more organic than I expected. It smells like grass, which is, hmm. I had no idea. 
And I'm sure lots of you who are experienced with oil paint are like laughing at everything I'm saying and doing right now, but it's my first time, baby. Got a deeper green now. And by deeper green, I mean I made a greenish brown. Whoops. Oh well, it's not going quite, it's not quite what I expected, but it is what it is. While I have some of this green on the brush, I'm just gonna kinda mix it into this guy as well. Let me get some bit of mossy gradient in there. Man, I really don't know what I'm doing here. But you know what? It's fun. It's fun. Okay, the, the next part is actually the important magical part, I think, which is the deep washes. I really need to let this dry for I think quite some time before I can do that. I have no idea how long this is gonna take to dry. I don't know if putting a heat gun on it is a good idea. So I'm just going to sit and wait for a bit and just see what happens naturally before moving on to the next step or trying a heat gun. <laughs> I, I did not leave it alone to dry. Actually, I kept checking on it every 15, 20 minutes and it wasn't drying at all, no surprise. And I kept just playing with it, mixing more colors, blending and seeing what would work. And I realized had I actually purchased some white, I could have mixed in some lighter highlights and probably gotten the paint job mostly done at this point. But I didn't have any light enough colors to actually make these highlights with. So I just made a big mess and, you know, just mixed it and it looked okay. Hey, it was really oily and I really needed it to dry. And eventually I, I did just stop and put it down and waited for it overnight. And this is the perfect time to tell you about the sponsor of this week's episode. My friends at Crippled God Foundry are offering awesome fantasy themed miniatures, accessories, and terrain pieces as 3D printable files for your favorite tabletop games. As a member of their Patreon, each month you receive a thematic collection of highly detailed miniatures and terrain pieces, as well as access to polls and a huge discount on their individual files on myminifactory.com. The March Patreon release is called The Enchanted Forest, and it includes the cool ant figure that I'm working with today. This set also features 19 unique models of fey nature, such as wood elves and centaurs with weapon and head options, fairies, dryads, nymphs, forest animals, satyrs, and even a leprechaun just in time for St. Patty's Day, and the protectors of the forest, the fey queen and the fey dragon. Included are some mystical flora such as ancient trees and fey plants and flowers of various kinds that you can use as modular scatter terrain or in your dioramas. Now all these models and terrain pieces come with a pre supported option, making printing really straightforward and easy. I'll put a link to their Patreon in the video description, as well as one to their My Mini Factory shop if you want to grab a few specific or previous models from them. Thanks Crippled God for sponsoring this video. Day two, this is still wet. Oh man, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. Well, it's been over 24 hours and this oil paint is still as wet as when I applied it. You know, I just touch it to my skin and it transfers the pigment right off. Had I done my research a bit better, I would have known that this was gonna happen, that, you know, these take really, really long time to dry. The oil washes with a lot of thinner, you know, dry faster than the paint. It's really amazing to me that I could go back in and still keep mixing this paint and that is wonderful, I can see that appeal. And if I had been a little bit smarter and bought some white oils, I would probably keep going on this guy, mixing some lighter shades and doing some highlights because that's what he really needs is all the highlights. He needs, you know, that kind of light gray on all the edges of his bark and everything. A gray dry brushing would work excellent and he'd be done. All this nice mixed undertone I really like. There's no way I can dry brush on top of this. It would have to be completely dry. I'd have to clear coat it and then switch back to the acrylics to do that. And I have no idea how long this is gonna take. Days, weeks? Uh, I can't really finish this as is. I don't quite wanna give up on playing with these oils or completing this model. So I was smart. Last night, just in case this were to happen, I printed off another copy. I'm gonna take that one off the printer, clean it up, and try a slightly different approach. 
So this time around on my second copy, I primed it out and then I just painted a base coat in basic acrylics, like I airbrushed in some gray and some green. Did a little bit of brush work to kind of touch up those spots, tiny bit of highlighting around his beard, but basically just a very, very, very fast blocky base coat. And then I went at this the way most people use oils and the way I've really been intending to, which is by just adding washes. This stuff mixes up so easily into a thin wash, just adding the paint thinner. And as soon as I applied it, I knew that this stuff was the magic everyone said it would be. It just flowed so beautifully. It barely stained the surface at all. It looked fantastic. It performed like a wash of your dreams. It, it really was incredible. The, the colors, everything looked really great. The best part is that this actually dried fairly quickly. Like within an hour, it was basically dry to the touch. Maybe not dry enough to clear coat, but dry enough to keep going on other things. I could use alcohol, not alcohol. I could use the thinner to remove some of the top surfaces if I wanted to, to clean up the wash, which is the great thing about these oil washes. Oh, around pretty happy at this point. So in conclusion, uh, my experimentation was a failure and a success. And well, I mean, really there is no failure. It's just the first try. I went about it the wrong way. I didn't do enough research and I just slapped paint on. The second time around after I kind of did a little bit more research and I highly suggest you watch uh, Marco Frisoni's uh, videos on oil painting. They're really, really helpful. They gave me the information that I was missing. I'm still a big <laughs> dummy with it. And you know, I like just messing around. Now with that info and a little bit of practice, I got some confidence that I could at least use these for washes and then eventually use them for some more adventurous painting. I really like the way the finished one turned out. These, these washes are amazing. Uh, I think there's going to be definitely some oil in my future. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it didn't really teach you how to use oil paints, but I hope it showed you that even an experienced person like me needs to jump head first into trying new things sometimes, and it doesn't always go smoothly, and that's okay. That's all part of the fun. It's all part of the hobby. That's how you learn. If you like this video, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments section below. If you want to pick up some tools or supplies for your own hobby needs and support the channel in the process, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I list all of the stuff that I use regularly regularly and you can get the right thing and blah, 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 blah. Also, if you really like these videos and you want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this week, guys. See you next week.